dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. A very Merry Christmas from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor welcoming you to Proudly We Hail, the United States Army and Air Force presentation. And our story for Christmas, The Caravansary on the Hill, starring Mr. J. Carroll Nash. <laughs> Many have pondered it, the miracle of the ages, and how they, Joseph and Mary, were directed to the humblest place imaginable, a simple manger in Judea. And it is of this time of generations we speak, this hour of simple majesty and splendor, this moment of the beginning of promise to mankind. I am Jan. I am the proprietor of a small caravansary located on one of the low-lying hills in Bethlehem of Judea, the only one of the town. My place provided shelter for travelers through Bethlehem, but times were slow, the caravans few, causing great irritation to my most exacting wife, Shayla. Fool, wastrel, oh, idler! Oh, no, don't, don't, don't strike me, Shayla. Coward! What has happened to you, I do not know. You were not like this once. You were not born to this. Now, Shayla, it grieves me that you should suffer such concern. Words, words. Now off to town with you. There will be a proclamation from Rome delivered at noon. And if the rumors are true, you will be too busy for a time to find mischief. As you wish, Sheila. And you will take the milk goat, the fat one. You will return with the price of the market, not a coin less. Or there will be no bread. Yes, Sheila, yes. I went into town. It seemed that all in Bethlehem who could walk had gathered to hear the proclamation from Rome. Be it known to every man, woman, and child assembled by order of Caesar Augustus, emperor of all Rome, a census will be reported of every person throughout the provinces for purposes of numbering and taxation. By the law, those who do not comply will suffer appropriate penalty. So this was the rumor Shayla had spoken of. Become law. There would be travelers, many travelers, to register for the census. And the caravansary would be full. It boded well for me. With the caravansary full, Shayla was always more generous. I sold the fat milk goat and started back to home and Shayla. It was dusk turning dark. It began to rain, unusual for the season. As I walked through the town, the money jingled in my pocket. I passed a familiar house. I paused. I felt the coins. Dare I chance it? I started to go in. Where are you going, friend? Oh, I, I jumped back in surprise and then disgust, for it was only Hester, beggar of the road. Wait, the dice jad are not kind at this hour or any other. And who are you to give counsel? I am a man of feeling, Jad. These are momentous hours. I have ears. I heard the proclamation. Not that. I speak of the coming of the new king to be born here in Bethlehem. The moment is at hand. Of hope for fools like me and cowards like you, we must look to the sky in the east, Jad, and watch for the star. Well, I, I think I should be getting along home. You're not going in? I think not. Wait, and here. These are for you. Oh, thank you. You are very generous. Yes, well, mind you, no talk that I was here, no talk to get back to Shayla. wasn't usual at all. After I had spoken with the beggar, Hester, I had no desire for the dice. No desire at all. And when I got home... Well, you're back. Yes, Shayla. And I have the money for the goat. All of it. No, not that. I was worried about you. You? You were worried for me? You were so late in returning. I... I did not mean to speak 
too unkindly this morning. Well, well now, Sheila, well, you had every right to speak to me as you did. I know, but you see, Jad, I was thinking today. We are not growing any younger, and we have spent so many quarrelsome hours. It is not right, and much of the fault is mine. Oh, now, come here to your husband, Shayla. Why? You have not kissed me like that, Jad, in as long as I can remember. Now, out of those wet clothes and get your dinner. I have heard of the proclamation, and we have hard work to get everything in readiness. We prepared for the host of travelers, but I didn't forget the star, and each night I looked for it. Yet I was hardly prepared for an early traveler, an advance emissary from Rome. He was a big man, and he spoke with such alarming authority. And the worst of all, Shayla had gone to town, and, and I had to meet him myself. You are the proprietor? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what will your wishes be? We will require lodging for his eminence, the consul, Marcus Publius, who will supervise the census. We'll take over your caravan, sir. But most important, the consul takes particular pride in his horse. The horse will require several measures of hay. It must be two parts alfalfa, one part oat. The texture not to exceed the width of a narrow lace. Well, I, I, I will gather it myself. Uh, there, there's a place several miles from here with precisely what you require. Very well. I will hold you personally responsible. And let me see a sample of it when you have it gathered. Shayla, Shayla, w what's this ahead here in the yard? They are raising a whipping post. A whipping post? The emissary ordered it put up during the census. A reminder uh, of the law. Oh, well... C come along, Shayla. I, I don't like that sound. I don't like it at all. Proprietor! Where's the proprietor? Quick, Jad, he wants you. Well, what, what, what for do you think? How do I know? But don't keep him waiting. Ah, here you are. Have you no ears? Must I shout my lungs out like a swineherd? Oh, no, 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 Excellency. No, indeed. Where's uh, the hay? The hay? But the consul's horse, idiot. He arrived today. Have you forgotten it? Oh, no, not at all, Excellency. I was just leaving to gather it. Well, mind that you do, and at once. Or I'll have you squared to the post in the yard and flogged. Such a forceful man. Well, I took the entire day to make the long trip for the hay. And believe me, I selected it almost strand by strand. Then by nightfall, when I returned with the hay, every nook and corner of the caravansary was filled. But still they came. Their pleas became annoying, exasperating, when well, they even stopped me in the yard. Oh, one moment, sir, if I may. Well, what is it? What is it? You're the proprietor, aren't you? I am, and I assure you tonight, indeed, I wish I were not. You have many difficulties. Difficulties? Well, well, I must say you were the first to recognize the fact. All these people shouting and pleading for a place to stay drive you to your wit's end. It must be hard to turn them away. Well, that too. But but why do they stop here when I tell them we are full? Surely there are other places to, to the south. They are weary. The night is very cold. Well, we are doing our best to take care of all. And, and, and you, woman, what is it you want? My husband is looking for you now. We, too, seek a place for the night. Woman, there is not a cubit of space left inside. The census take us from Rome have everything. Even my wife and I sleep out. Why stay here? Why, well, why not try further south? We have traveled 60 miles these three days. 60 miles? Well, that... Oh, no. You? On the back of a donkey, heat of day and cold of night, and a woman so... so heavy with... Child? What she had said and, and, and what I said made me look to the sky. And there it was. Star of the East. In magnificent brilliance, I turned back to her. Blessed lady, there will be lodging for you. Wait here a moment. Wait here. 
I rushed back inside to the warmth and crowd of census takers. I sought out Shayla and whispered to her what had happened, but what to do? Eject a census taker from Rome? That would be trouble, but, but what to do? Shayla could not say, and then, then the way occurred to me. There in the babble of noise and the multitude, I prayed. Prayed as I had forgotten to pray, as I had never prayed before. Father in heaven, who blessed me with a small part in the magnificence of thy plans, give me guidance, I beseech thee. Show me the way that I may follow in thy will. Amen. I received my answer. I received my answer. She was with her husband when I returned to them. You have a place for us. Yes, come with me. I have a place for you. And it is as it should be. I led them to the empty stable. I helped him clean it out. Then I gathered the sweet hay I had traveled so far to get that day and spread it on the floor. I got them food, the fine goat cheese Shayla had made. And when I left them, he shook my hand and she, she smiled her gratefulness to me. I left them. And the next thing I knew, Shayla was running excitedly toward me. Where have you put them, Jan? The stable. Will they be safe there? They will be safe. But in the stable, Jad, they are comfort. They are where they should be, Shayla. I'm sure of it. But why do you shake so? The emissary is calling for you. He's demanding the hay for the council's horse. I have found use for it. He'll have to wait until tomorrow. But he shouts of a flogging. He wants it now. What will we do? I will tell him there is none. Jad, this is strange. Here I find myself asking you what to do. Tonight, Shayla, tonight marks the beginning of all things. All things for me and for all men. Proprietor! Where is that proprietor? The emissary is calling you. In a moment. Let us first kneel, Shayla. Let us kneel to speak our prayer. Our prayer of gratefulness for this night. <laughs> Throughout the ages, Christmas has served to center our thoughts on home. Today, the men of your army and your air force, in Europe, in the Arctic, in the far-flung outposts of the Pacific, want you to know they are thinking of you. To you, fellow Americans, gathered around your paternal Yule log, they send their heartfelt Christmas greetings. Who among men can utter with more sincerity the age-old prayer for peace on earth goodwill toward men. Thank you, J. Carroll Nash, for a marvelous performance. Mr. Nash appeared to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearance of all motion picture stars on this program. Next week, we present Mr. Ralph Morgan in Touchdown. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying a Merry Christmas and cheerio from Hollywood.